Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. If this is the type of video where you're looking for a trashed uh, finish and surface, and we're going to turn around and make it 120% uh, better than new and glossy finish, this isn't the video for you. This is a video where you check your egos at the door, and I can show you how to get the most out of an extra thin surface and not only save the paint but turn it around a little bit as well this is a 1966 ford galaxy 500 single stage very uneven paint we're going to do a paint rescue yet again today with a classic an antique or a collectible we never test the seals with a pressure washer and a foam gun and free-flowing water uh, the little bit of moisture we're going to use for the cleaning process will come from either a waterless or rinseless wash that process is the best for these type of vehicles before we go any further if you are not a regular uh, or you're not subscribed to the channel subscribe hit the notification bell that'll let you know when we have new content for you which is on a regular basis and also if the video helps give it a thumbs up if you don't like it give it a thumbs down if you have any questions or any comments down in the comment section i check that area regularly We have some areas where the paint is original, some where it's been repaired and resprayed. A lot of the paint is oxidized, which happens to single stage rather quickly and easily. We can correct that uh, and make things look a little more even throughout each panel. The popular way that in my area we've been bringing these back is to well not do a respray and just save the paint and the material that's already there let's get some gloss meter readings they're probably going to be all over the place obviously on the fenders here 92.8 those are the glossiest and flattest areas on the vehicle and are probably going to be the highest readings and then when we come to this section of the hood where we want to try and get as close to this section we're at 72 so we have to bump things up about 20 gloss units on the hood 60 how about the rest of the vehicle what does it look like up here 61 back quarter panel 64 trunk 75 so it's again it's all over the place but it's rather low we're going to be able to make some huge strides most of the work however most of the time is going to be making things look a bit more even up front one of the most important readings we can get from this is the thickness from the paint depth gauge again this is single stage so there's going to be a primer layer and then a color layer and that's it so where it looks like it's been repainted and reworked uh, absolutely so we have bondo and then primer and then paint and then we just go to 4.4 so we're, we're going to have to be a little careful here it's not like we have to worry about clear coat on here so we got the primer layer and a thicker layer of color coat still have to be careful how about over here whoa so yeah, we really have to be careful on this panel, but we can still make improvements. And then over here, and that's where there's half a gallon of Bondo. Well, let's go around the rest of the car. 2.2. I have a feeling a lot of this is going to be 3.2 or lower. okay room for improvement i already have the plan 
Once you get experience working on these, you probably have a plan by the time the car has parked as it's coming in the driveway. Okay. So let's talk about the plan. Here's what we're going to do. This is closer to matching these two sides than right here. So let's start here. And what we're going to do here, there's just enough material left to break out the rotary and a cutting compound. We don't want to use the harshest cutting compound out there. It's available. We want to use one that is adaptable, that breaks down and finishes down rather nicely. This is going to be a hard, stubborn surface. So even though we use a wool uh, pad and a cutting compound, it's not going to take much from there to finish down. Over here, to make it match this and get it closer to uh, the fenders, we're going to have to do a little bit of color sanding or wet sanding, and we're going to have to be careful. So we want this to match this and get this closer to the fenders. Let's start right here. Let me grab some equipment for this section. What I have here is going to be, well, as close to perfect as you're going to get. The Kokemi H901 Heavy Cut. It's not the most aggressive out there, so it's perfect for that section. But even better, the 3D AAT501. This has the adaptive abrasive technology, and it has great cut right out of the gate, and then sort of rounds that abrasive off a little bit. It's just, it's fantastic. We're going to team that up with the Lake Country purple or hybrid wool pad on a rotary. Let's get this started. We have a piece of masking tape here. So when we're done with this pass, we're going to do a couple passes here. We can pull this off and see that the progress that we've made. Is it going to be enough? Well, let's find out. find a towel wipe off the residue tape.
by the way, with single stage, fun to work with and really can come out nice. However, it's a little bit more work. I don't know if it's hard to see here, but a lot of transfer, so it uh, has to be cleaned out between every pass. Okay, get you off the stand, bring you in closer, and you'll see the line and the difference. We get a bit of a more crisp reflection from the light above. Let's put some numbers besides just looking at it under the light. Again, starting at 72, has it gone up a little? Yeah, so it's gone up 10 uh, gloss units already. And what we wanna do is finish it. And that'll bring it up to hopefully just under 90, maybe 87. And that will be improvement getting the same crisp reflections that as we do on these refinished fenders here. A little bit of polish residue there. So we're getting there. This section here will be a bit of a challenge. Let me finish off the rest of this side here and let's jump over to that side then. Okay, I went ahead and finished the rest of the hood here. Let me wipe off the residue. They're going to come in with the paint depth gauge and see what, uh, see what we have left. Although we've gotten closer when it comes to the reflection from here to here, it's not going to be an exact match with the texture of the paint. And then we also have the limitations of how much material we have left on this hood, which is not a lot on this side. So this will be a lesson in composure and discipline as to know when to stop Put a check on the ego and save the paint on this hood. So let me get you off of the, what this side looks like, a much crisper reflection and even better reflection. Closer to the fender than it was before. And now we've pulled this a lot further away from this side. So before we jump over here and see what we can do to improve this side, let's take some paint measurements and see what we have left. Dig this out of my pocket. We were in the twos. 2.1. 2.2. So we've made those improvements without a whole lot shaved from the top of this hood. And I believe this is where we're gonna stop. We do wanna let a little bit of material on here in case something does come sliding across the hood and scratch it. There's enough material on there then to correct that. So we need to think about the future with this. Let's get over to this side here. Again, let's take these measurements one more time over here. A little bit thicker, so we have a little bit of room to play with. We can do a little bit of color sanding and then polish out from there. It's a little thin up there. We need to be mindful of that. Let me go grab the sand sheets okay. and discs. I believe we have enough on the hood to do a uh, two grit step, meaning we're gonna start out with 2000 grit and I have 2000 grit on this block. Use a block this size. You can get away with that because you know we have two football fields worth of a hood here that's perfectly flat. And we're gonna wet sand because we wanna contain the dust. We don't want dust flying through the shop. So let me get things a little moist here. If you were planning ahead like I wasn't, you would have these sheets, or if you're using discs, already soaking in water. And let's get started. 
we just want to shave, safely shave some of this uh, dead paint, some of these dead paint molecules from the surface, flatten things out as we are doing that simultaneously. That will help with some crisper reflections. Okay, and I'm going to show you here single stage, and you're going to see that running down the side of the, the pad here. But let's continue on. Okay, and again, we have all these dead paint molecules that we've shaved. Now, we're gonna wipe this off. I'm gonna go get a towel, rinse that off. We're gonna step down to 3000 grit. So, okay, we'll we're be right back. back. I rinsed that off a little bit, dried it. Now we're gonna step to 3000 grit and make those sand marks a little easier to remove. Constantly spraying and misting water when I can. Some of you that have the machines that gives you a constant feed of water to the surface, that's a good place to be. A lot less manual labor on your part. And a lot quicker. That's good for that section. Let me finish the rest of the hood and we'll be back again. Okay, that's done. Let me wipe off, wipe down this moisture. And our next step is going to be simply polishing out the sand marks. We're not going after anything else because the sand disc and sheet have already done all of that work, all of that work for us. Break out the rotary. And let's start to polish. And what you want to do is stop frequently and clean off that pad. As it picks up the single stage and sticks to each fiber, they just get matted down. And then the pad eventually gets useless. So I'll be right back. By the way, as I wipe off this residue, I do want you to be aware that it's not just the pads that you need to keep an eye on. Even the towels that you wipe the residue off are going to turn white eventually, 
get clogged and not be all that effective. So I would, uh, I would definitely have at least half a dozen to a dozen towels within arm's reach. Okay, so we did up to right here, you're gonna see the line. Get you guys off. And now, we have a reflection over here that's getting close once we get to the finishing step. Much more crisp. Once we get to the finishing step, we'll be there. I also have to get a small polisher and polish up tight against these lines. But that's how you wanna get these crisper reflections as we stand back a little further. And look at the two sides. Getting closer. Okay, with the hood finally giving us a crisper reflection, we can take care of the rest of the painted surfaces. And we're going to clean it up. Again, we don't have a whole lot to play with. So we're gonna clean it up, polish it, and protect it at the same time. And we're gonna be using the Kokemi P601. This is a one cut and finish, and this has uh, a sealant within the formula. And then on top of that, we're gonna be using the built hamber speed wax. That's also a sealant. Those on top of each other gives it a really, uh, a nice glow, uh, a wet look to it. A unique look that coatings don't have. So we'll continue back through the rest of the uh, panels here. We're gonna stick with the combination of the uh, forced rotation polisher by Flex here. And we're gonna stick with the same pad as well. And again, because of all the transfer, you really have to stay on top of keeping the pad clean to be effective. The only difference is the P601. Let's get to it. And get through the rest of these panels. Many trips to the pad washer. I already have that clogged up and I need to change the water. So we're just changing up a little bit. Coming over to the sink. Cleaner, brush, operate the machine. OK, 
Okay, with the paint corrected the best we could with the limited amount of material that we had to work with, we have it protected somewhat. There was a polymer sealant mixed in with the uh, correction fluid from Kalkami P601. We're going to put the cherry on top, so to speak, and this is going to be the built hamber double speed wax. And this teamed up with the Kalkami will give it a nice wet look, uh, nice depth, a nice warm glow, quite different than the gloss from ceramic, if you have the eye. I do like to stay away uh, from single stage paint with ceramic because single stage is so absorbent and wicks everything into it and drinks it in, even polish oils. So uh, polymers and waxes are the way to go for a single stage. Let's get to it. Very easy to use, just like any other hard tin wax, my favorite type of wax. This is a polymer wax. Get it on the surface, spread it out evenly. It doesn't care how you get it on the surface. Circular motions, triangular motions, Just get it on there. You should be able to get around the car rather quickly. Wipe it off. And we are finished. Clean paint, the dead paint molecules, single stage, cleaned off of there. We have reflection. Once again, it was done safely and responsibly. Time period correct. Let me show you. Still have the areas where there's uh, metal showing through. But this is the package that has become very popular with the classics and antiques, and that's to save the existing material, get it very clean, get it a little shiny, time period correct. Again, they weren't running around in the 60s looking like a mirror, perfectly flat. But more importantly, getting it done safely without taking down the thickness of the material that it's painted with down to nothing, giving it no chance in case there's some sort of imperfection or a scratch that would have to be corrected later, we left some material to do so. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Leave the questions down in the comment section. I will get to them as quick as I can. This has been Brian from Apex Detail. It's always a pleasure to spend a few minutes with you out of the day, and I look forward to the next time. Catch you guys in the next video.